Today, brothers and sisters, the message that the Lord has given me is entitled Experiencing Crisis with or without preparation. I'm going to ask you to bow your heads. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, this is your time. These are your people. But human frailty stands in the way of your people receiving the blessing they came seeking. But I know, Heavenly Father, if you will just take full control, that this time will be spent, Lord, thoroughly nourishing, thoroughly enlightening, thoroughly informing our hearts. Block out, distract it, anything that would distract. Block out sleepiness and anything that would hinder us from getting our message. And may the atmosphere within your house be conducive for one to cry out, what must I do to be saved? Now, Lord, we commend and we commit this message into your loving hands and we say thank you, Lord for what you will do in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Turn with me in, in your Bibles to the book of Luke. What book, everyone? Luke chapter 22. We're gonna begin with verse 31. Luke chapter 22, beginning with verse 30. One. Luke 22 and verse 31. This coming now just a short time after what is called the Last Supper. We call it communion, the first communion in the upper room. This is a point blank assessment that the Lord is making of Peter as he stood at that moment, where he is at that moment in time. And the Lord speaks directly to Peter. It is not by accident that he's speaking to Peter, even though the disciples are also being addressed. The lead person who is being addressed is Peter because Peter is the most outspoken of all the disciples. Peter is a bold, impulsive person, the first to speak and the last to listen. And so the Lord addresses the disciples, but primarily Peter, when he says these words, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I prayed for thee, Simon, that thy faith fail thee not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Now what does that mean, when you're converted? That means at that moment in time, Peter is not converted. Isn't that right? And so, brothers and sisters, we can learn now I will ask you, by the grace of God, lovingly, kindly, but honestly, assess yourself as I will myself as we see what happened in this message. The Lord says, Peter, Simon Peter, Satan have desired to have you. He wants to devour your soul. He wants to consume you. He wants to destroy you. He said, but I've prayed for you, Peter, that your faith fail not. Now, what does this mean? That means, brothers and sisters, by inference, that his faith or his standing with God is on shaky ground. At current Con spiritual condition, there is a question as to what's going to happen in the future, future related to Peter. I prayed for you, Peter, that thy faith fail thee not, and when thou art converted, which means in the future, when you become converted, then strengthen 
the brethren, which means right now you're not in a position to do that. Now this is a blow to Peter because Peter believes that he's close to the Lord. Isn't that right? Isn't that right? I mean, he truly believes this. In fact, the scriptures tell us that he came back and made this declaration. He said, Lord, look at verse 33. Lord, I am ready to go with thee, both to prison and to death. Lord, I am ready. Let me be clear, everyone. Whether or not an individual is ready to do the Lord's bidding, to render him the highest service, is not for him or her to declare. Rightly understood, we should always stay in a position to say, Lord, I'm not sure. Lord, have mercy on my soul. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. We should always presume that we need to come up on higher ground. This is what it means when the Bible says, not I, but Christ. He must increase, but I must decrease. Follow me, follow me. But Peter said instead, Lord, I'm ready to go with thee both to prison and to death. Now notice this, brothers and sisters. Peter is essentially declaring, I'm ready to render you the highest service. I mean, what can be higher for a person to give up their livelihood, prison, or to give up their life, death? I'm ready, whatever, however things go, I am ready. Peter says, the Lord says to Peter, he turns, listen to me, he turns and he says, I tell thee, Peter. In other words, I'm trying to tell you. The cock shall not crow this day before thou shalt thrice deny that thou knowest me. You're not ready to just align yourself with me to go to prison or to die, but in fact, you're about to deny me. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, Jesus had to tell Peter about himself. Peter didn't know that's what he was going to do. Perhaps it's because he spoke so boldly all the time. Are you listening to me? Sometimes, brothers and sisters, our assessment of ourselves comes from our ability to speak and elucidate. Are you listening to me? Oh, I have an answer. Don't worry. I can speak. I step, step back. I can handle this. Are you listening to me? And we, we find ourselves, brothers and sisters, having this high estimate in ourselves. We lose our ability to say, Lord, help me. Because we trust in our, our smarts, our, our, our cumin. We, we trust in our abilities. But let me be clear, <laughs> no matter how bold Peter is, until he gets, until he gets away from being self-centered, until he becomes Christ-centered and not self-centered, he will speak for himself, but he will not speak for Christ in the crunch time. Did you hear me? I have a message that I preach entitled uh, Kingdom Bound Disposition. And I talk then about individuals who like to, I've always noticed that when so, someone says, you know, they're bold and they're outspoken, they always like to let everybody know they're bold and outspoken. <laughs> I'm just bold and outspoken. That's just who I am. That's how I am. Are you listening to me? Yeah. You heard people say that. Maybe you're one of them. Are you listening to me? Huh? But you know what happens, brothers and sisters? that person oftentimes is very good at defending themselves. But there comes a point, brothers and sisters, where defending yourself 
will get yourself in trouble. Excuse me, excuse me. Defending Christ will get yourself in trouble. When you feel like, when you realize you must defend Christ and his way, and it's going to get you in trouble, if you are self-centered, you will opt out of that situation. Also, I want to say this. There comes a point also, no matter how bold, how outspoken we may be, there also comes a point where we've got to show restraint. Are you listening to me? When Jesus went, because I'm not going to get there, I'm not going to get there in this message, I'm just going to say this now. When Jesus went to the hour of his trial, he was the picture of restraint. Accusations were coming at him fast and furious, all kinds of specious arguments and words and things were being said to him, but he never said a mumbling word. Are you listening to me? And when he did, it was just a few words. Can you imagine all the stuff that was going on against Jesus, and yet he was the picture of restraint. I think to myself, and that's where we're going in these last days. Are we ready to just take it? I tell thee, Peter, I'm trying to get through. I tell thee, Peter, I want you to understand. The cock shall not crow this day before thou shalt thrice deny that thou knoweth me. I'm trying to tell you that, Peter. But Peter isn't listening. The Lord is elucidating a crisis that's about to take place. This crisis he has already outlined, and we're going to go through that in Scripture in just a moment. He has outlined to his disciples four times. It is a time in which his ministry is going to is going to become exposed to persecution. Now he's had ridicule, he's had all kinds of things happen, but not the likes of what is was going to happen at the hour of his trial. Not only is he going to be persecuted, but his disciples by association Something could happen with them. We don't know what it is because they didn't stay with them. But whatever the case is, it's not going to be a pretty picture to be a part of the ministry team of Christ. And he begins to outline what's going to happen going into a time of trouble. What I want you to do now is turn with me to the book of Mark. What book, everyone? the book of Mark, and I want to show you when Jesus began to discuss the very things that are going to happen to him, and we're going to look at four different verses. I want you to see this, brothers and sisters. The Bible says, and he began to, excuse me, Mark chapter 8, verse 30, verse 31. Mark chapter 8 and verse 31. Mark 8 and verse 31. Here it goes. And he began to teach them. Mm -hmm. Are you getting this? Yeah. All right. That means he wasn't teaching them this before. Now let me pause for a second. Let me be very clear. He's about to tell his disciples the fullness of his mission. The fact that he has to tell his disciples this is a sad fact in and of itself. His disciples are a part of the Jews. They are a part of the rank and file. They should understand what a Messiah is going to do. They have already confessed that they know he's the son of God. They should know by the sacrifices that have been taking place down through the years, the daily sacrifice, the yearly sacrifice, the feast in their season, all that took place in the sanctuary points to Jesus Christ. They should understand that it is about the Lamb of God being slain from the foundation of the world. This is the promised Messiah, therefore he should not have to teach them what's going to happen. But what you have to understand is that Israel, throughout Israel, the devil had redirected what a Messiah should look like. 
To them, a Messiah is going to deliver them from the Romans. But that's not what the angel told Joseph, isn't that right? When Joseph was there, you know, trying to figure out what to do with his fiance because she was pregnant, but not for him. And she's trying to figure out what should I do? And the angel steps in and says, but fear not thee, Joseph, to take Mary to be thy wife, for she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name, what everyone, Jesus, for he shall save his people from the Romans. All right, what did he say? He shall save his people from what everyone? Their sins, is that right? So they should know what the mission is of Christ. But let me tell you, brothers and sisters, the devil has shifted the conversation. Listen carefully. I want to make sure everybody's hearing this. The devil has shifted the, con con the, con the conversation. He had moved the goalpost. He had changed what a Messiah should look like. No longer was a Messiah to come and deal with eternal issues, but instead to deal with temporal issues. Are you hearing me, brothers and sisters? Well, let me make sure you got me, because I don't think you got me. Let me make a present-day application. He's doing the same thing right now. He's done it to Christianity about 30 or 40 years ago. If you turn on the television set, I don't care what the denomination was, you would hear the preacher say, get your house in order, Jesus is coming soon. Are you all hearing me? But the devil has shifted the conversation. And now people are saying, God has a name with your blessing. Sorry, he has a blessing with your name on it. You're just around the corner from your breakthrough. Y you hear what I'm saying? Huh? You ought to know what your inheritance is in Christ. And people start thinking, the money's coming. When is it going to come? Some people right now, it's the top of the year. This is the year of my favor. Are you listening to me? And it's changed, it's changed, and the prosperity preachers have re listen, the prosperity preachers have replaced the eschatological preachers, the preachers preaching about the last days. And it's beginning to happen in God's church as well. You change the conversation. The disciples were victims of this, brothers and sisters. Despite the fact that they heard Jesus. Repeat the words that John the Baptist in Matthew chapter 3 had said that characterized his ministry. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Jesus in Matthew chapter 4 begins his ministry. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. My purpose here is to get you ready for the kingdom. Listen to this. He began, look at verse 31, he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the what? Of who? And of the who? And the who? Who everyone? And the scribes and be what? Killed, but after three days rise again. Look what this says now, brothers and sisters. Peter, the Bible says, took him and began to rebuke him. Now listen to this. If you see the preamble in that verse, verse 32, it says, and he spake that saying, how everyone? That means for everybody to hear. It's, it's like saying the Lord broadcasted. The Lord spoke openly to make sure nobody missed it. But then the Bible says, look, but Peter took him and began to do what? Rebuke him. In other words, he said, that's not going to happen, Lord. No, 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 that's not going to happen. Now, somebody standing there might say, oh, that's a good disciple. He's looking out for his, his Lord, and, and uh, he's trying to keep him from getting in trouble, and, and that's a good thing. It's, that's a good disciple. But that's not the way the Lord responded. The Bible says that the Lord said, look at this, 
the Lord says, but when he, look at this, had turned about and looked on his disciples, we'll come back to that, he then rebuked Peter, saying what? Get thee behind me, Satan, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but the things that be of now, by the way, this is, a, this is a continuation of the third temptation of Christ. I don't have time to explain that. But I want you to understand, brothers and sisters, the servant of the Lord says he was addressing not so much Peter, but the devil that was speaking through Peter. See, it might be a good thing. See, if someone would say it's a good thing, disciples looking out for his Lord, he's trying to keep him from getting in trouble. So that's a good thing. The Lord is saying, no, that's not a, in fact, he rebuked it. In fact, the Lord, I want you to see this now. Look at verse 33. The Bible says, but when he had turned about and looked on his disciples, he rebuked Peter. Now, in other words, if I got this right, the Lord, the Lord says, says, listen, I am going to suffer many things. I'm going to be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the, and, the, and, the, and the scribes and I'll be killed. And he said it for everybody to hear to make sure they heard it and heard it well. And then Peter turned around and said to everybody, to the Lord as he spoke to, to, as he spoke to the Lord, everybody heard him and said, no, Lord, that's not going to happen. And then the Lord looked at everybody first and then looked at Peter. You know why? That's because he wanted to see the effect that Peter's words had on the disciples. It would have a mission-altering effect. It would have a mission-killing effect. It would, it would give a false coloring of the future. It would leave the impression that trouble that, excuse me, that prosperity is ahead and not trouble. It would change the way people would pre prepare if they listened to what Peter said. If they listened to what the Lord said, they would prepare a certain way. But if they listened to what Peter said, they would prepare another way. If you think there's no trouble ahead, you prepare yourself for good times. But if you think trouble is ahead, you prepare for that. Listen to me, brothers and sisters. I wonder what God's people are preparing for in these last days. What are we preparing for? We all have the same message, isn't that right? We all understand, even if it's not being preached so much today, that a time of trouble is coming such as never was before since there was a nation. Whether we preach it or not, it's still coming. Come on, say amen. amen. Are you all listening to me? Are you listening to me? The question is, how are we preparing? Are we preparing for the temporal, for what is ahead of us right now? Are we putting all of our energies in that? Or are we getting ready for the second coming of Christ? And he spake that saying openly, and Peter took him and began to rebuke him. But when he had turned about, he looked on his disciples and he rebuked Peter. He said, get thee behind me, Satan, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but the things that be of men. And then he calls everybody together and he gives a summation. Listen to this. He gives a summation of what he's trying to say earlier. He says, since when he called all the people unto him with the disciples also, he said unto them, he says, whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Now look at this. Look at this. Look at the next verse. I want you to see this. Look at the next verse. The Bible says in verse 35, for whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels, the same shall save it. Do you know what that means? Whosoever will save his life, that means right now. In other words, put more emphasis on the things you want to do, the things you want to have, the things you want to achieve. In other words, you carve out all, all considerations, all, uh, uh, you, you know, all your energies on the here and now if you will try to save your life 
and put the gospel and the work of the Lord in the back seat in the end down the road, you will lose your life. That's what it's saying. But whosoever shall lose his life, that means right now, for my sake and the gospels down the road, the same shall be saved. Amen. Amen? So let me just tell you, the brothers and sisters, when I preach the word of God, I don't preach for short term. So I'm not preaching for applause. Come on, say amen. amen. Are, are you listening to me? Yeah. I, I'm not preaching. This. Well, wow, oh, did they like it? <laughs> Come on, say amen. amen. That, that's not, well, I don't preach for that reason. Come on, say amen. amen. Are you listening to me? So the kind of things that I'm preaching doesn't put a smile on your face when you first hear it. Come on, say amen. But I want you to know that when Jesus comes, you have the biggest smile on your face. Come on, say amen. And that's what I'm looking at. The investment right now is for long term. Come on, say amen. So look at this. Listen to this. We had called the people. He's called, whosoever will come after me. Let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow. So this is the first time the Lord has spoken to his disciples. Remember, he began to teach. That's the first time, but they have nothing to show for it. So let's go to the second time. Just, you don't have to go far. Chapter 9. Chapter 9. Say, stay in the book of Mark. Chapter 9. We're going to look at verses 8, 9, and 10. Jesus is coming down off the Mount of Transfiguration. And this is what the Bible says. And suddenly when they had looked round about, they saw no man anymore save Jesus only with themselves. And as they came down from the mountain, he charged them that they should tell no man what things they had seen. What does that say, everyone? Till the Son of Man were what? Risen from the dead. Now look at this, verse 10. Come on, read it, everyone. Look at what it says. But they kept that saying with who? Themselves. Questioning one with another what the rising from the dead should mean. <laughs> the resource. The one who told them about this is right there. But they kept that saying to themselves. They didn't go to the immediate reason of Jesus. What do you mean? When you say rise from the dead, don't tell anybody what you've seen till the rising of the dead. Notice this, brothers and sisters. Jesus had told them that he's going to die, but he's going to be resurrected the first time in Matthew chapter and Mark chapter 8. But now, brothers and sisters, Jesus is continuing to talk about what he said so in other words he's in the word that he said he's talking he's repeating reiterating the word that he said but because the first time they didn't gain the understanding because it conflicted the, with the way they saw the not so distant future the near future they said well that doesn't go along with the way we think so we're not going to ask him anything so when he said, don't tell anybody what you've seen until the rising of the dead, they kept it to themselves. Isn't that what it says? And they started asking each other, what does the rising of the dead mean? This whole notion, brothers and sisters, of having the resources that you need right at your fingertips but not going to them, but I want you to don't feel so bad about the disciples. We're doing the same thing. Are you listening to me? Jesus has spoken to us two ways. Search the scripture. For in them you think you have eternal life. For they are they which testify of me. The word of God is his testimony. But then the Bible says the dragon is raw for the woman. And went to make war with the remnant of her seed. Which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus. Jesus has spoken in the word of God. Jesus has spoken in the spirit of prophecy. But how many people are going? How many people are reading? I want to encourage everybody. Do you have the app? Do you have the app? You do. Praise the Lord. But those who don't, get the app. It's free. The complete published writings of Ellen White. Get the app. Come on, say amen. amen. So when you get out on the, tra <coughs> on the train, <coughs> or you're doing your commute, you get out there on the, on the Long Island Railroad, wherever you, 
Where you have time, whatever, lunchtime, whatever, pull it out. Come on, say amen. amen. People pull out their big old, look, listen to me, and big old New York Times. And, well, nobody does that anymore. I guess you do it on the phone. Isn't that right? But when I was going to, you know, when I used to take the train, they'd pull it out. Say, everybody, say, look, I'm, look, I'm, I'm reading something important. I'm reading the New York Times. You listen to me? You pull out your spirit of prophecy. Come on, say it. Pull out the word of God. Am I talking to Adventists? We're Adventists here, aren't we? <laughs> Supposed to be comfortable in the pulpit. Come on, say amen. 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 <laughs> Look at this. Here comes the third time. Two times now the Lord has told them. Two times they have nothing to show for it. I want to suggest to you at this point, listen carefully, that not listening has its consequences. So if you, you know, this, it's not like, well, you don't listen and you kind of stay where you are. No, you're move, we're always moving one way or the other. We're either moving towards Christ or moving away from Christ. So let me show you this. Same chapter, Mark chapter 9. Now I want you to look at verse 30. Verse 30. Here's the third time. And they departed thence and passed through Galilee, uh-huh, and he would not that any man should know it, for he taught his disciples, come on everyone, and said unto him, unto them, the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of men, and they shall kill him, and after that he is killed, he shall rise the what everyone? That's a short-term prophecy, isn't that right? But look at verse 32. But they understood not that saying and were afraid to ask him. The resource is right there. The source of their knowledge is right there. But they won't look because it doesn't jive with their understanding of the near future. This is why, brothers and sisters, no, I, no, now this is going to be a tough one. Are you ready for this? This is why, brothers and sisters, I'm going to say two things. Number one, the whole notion of make America great again is ridiculous. Come on, say amen. Amen. The people of prophecy sit, people of prophecy sit and recognize that this world is getting worse and worse and somebody says it's about to get great again. Are you listening to me? Yes. Now that's not the tough part. But the other tough part is the whole notion that it will all be one, that there'll be racial harmony. Prophetically speaking, this world is going to get worse and worse. Now, that doesn't mean we, don't ex we, we accept it. That doesn't mean we don't try to make, but we need to understand. From a prophetic standpoint, the kinds of things we're looking for, for people to come together, we will see it, but we will see it in heaven. Come on, say amen. Are you hearing me? And that's what our principal investment must be in. Getting ready for heaven. Amen. Here we go. Three times they haven't. But, brothers and sisters, let me show you something. I told you there's consequences. Look at this. Verse 33. And he came to Capernaum. Put it up on screen. Really, thank you so much. He came to Capernaum. And being in the house, now this is a place we love to rest. I've actually been to Capernaum. I know that Jesus would retreat there and he loved to go there and relax. That's his relaxation place. Okay? So he came to Capernaum and being in the house, he finally get. they all come together in the house, him and his disciples. And then he asked this question, come on everybody, what was it 
that ye disputed among yourselves by the way, which means on the road. Is that right? What were you disputing among yourself? But look at the next verse. The Bible says, but they held their peace. Now, just the mere fact that the word says, but, I want to make sure I introduce this to everybody because you can learn a lot when you're reading scripture. When you see that word, but, you know what it means? Whatever is coming afterwards is diametrically opposed to what came before. Okay? So in this particular case, you say, well, what is it that Jesus said, listen to me, that caused the scripture to say, but, but they held their peace? Well, look at it. He said, what was it that you disputed among yourselves, by the way, but they held their peace? I'm going to show you why. For, that means this is the reason. This is the reason they held their peace. By the way, that means on the road, they had disputed among themselves who should be the greatest. <laughs> the greatest in what? Let me just say this, everybody, right at this point. When Jesus came, he found himself surrounded by mega Israelites. Now, I want to make sure I say that right so you don't misunderstand. I said mega with an M. Come on, say amen. Make sure you got that. M-I-G-A, mega Israelites, make Israel great again. <laughs> Did you hear me? So what happened, brothers and sisters, is that Jesus, when he said, what were you talking about? The fact is that what they were talking about was good times ahead. Peace and prosperity, sovereignty for Israel, and Jesus had finished telling them, I'm about to die. There, what they were talking about means that their words and thoughts and conversation was diametrically opposed to what Jesus said. So they knew that, and so they held their peace. They're going down the road, says, you know what, when he establishes his kingdom, I'm going to be the secretary of state. Now you, what are you going to be? Are you listening to me? Huh? And they have this fantasy conversation that didn't include Jesus. Now, I told you there's a consequence. Listen to this. Jesus asked the question, what was it that disputed among yourself? What were you guys talking about? What it means is they were within earshot of Jesus, but he wasn't included in the conversation. So when you ask somebody, well, what were you talking about? That means you don't know what they were talking about, but you just know they were talking. Isn't that right? Yeah. So, but they knew enough to know that their conversation was not the conversation Jesus was having, so they were content to have it with themselves, but not have Jesus in it, because he's going to spoil the conversation. Are you listening to me? They're here talking about prosperity, and he's going to step in and say, but you know, I'm, you know I'm, I, just, I told you all, I'm going to die. So I'm asking this question. Are we talking about what he's talking about today? I'm wondering, are we talking about what he's talking about today? Let me tell you this, brothers and sisters. We went through the pandemic 2020 to 2023, basically. Some will say it's still going on in some form. All right, but we went through the pandemic. It's something that we want to talk about, too. Somebody raised this in a meeting about trying to make sure that we still pay careful attention we'll talk about that but let me tell you listen to this i saw god's people all over the place some people say this is nothing it's a glorified cold and i was amazed in fact let me tell you why i was amazed in matthew chapter 24 
when the disciples said, tell us what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world, Jesus gave them some signs. Is that right? Yeah. But the first thing he did before he gave them the signs, he said, take heed that no man deceive you. Did you get that, everyone? He started protecting the signs before he started telling the signs. So he said, take heed that no man deceive. But then he begins to get into the hard, cold signs. He said, there'll be wars and rumors of wars. Is that right? All right? He said, but the end is not yet. There will be famine and pestilence and earthquake. What do these signs all have in common? They're all deadly. Are you hearing me? Now a pestilence come along. We say, there's nothing and nothing to see here. Now I can understand the people in the world. Listen to me. Listen to, listen, listen to this. I can understand the people in the world doing that, but the people of God? You know, just because we know the health message doesn't mean the pestilence is not deadly. Come on, say amen. amen. Are you listening to me? Yes. Pestilence is pestilence. Yes. These people are dead around us. Come on, say amen. amen. And they were dead before the vaccine was produced. Come on, say amen. amen. We got it. We got it. And let me tell you, what the people of God do, we allow people to steal the narrative who are outside of the house of the Lord. Let me tell you, let me just, I'm going to give you a little, let you in a little secret. If you want to know the sequence that lead, here's the other thing, listen to this. You want to know the sequence that will lead us to the time of trouble. It's not vaccine, nothing. Are you listening to me? It's calamities. Impending conflict, great controversy. I want you to look for that paragraph that talks about pestilence. Satan will impart into the air a deadly taint. Y'all heard about this, right? And by it, thousands will be killed. And we, we let people steal the narrative. Is it, is it Bill Gates? Is it 5G technology? Is it the Wu in province? Don't let the devil steal the narrative. Come on, say amen. amen. You want to know who's the cause of it? You know what? You want to know? It's in there. Look at the next paragraph. Impending conflict. Then Satan will persuade men that it is the Sabbath keepers that, that, are, that caused all of this. When in fact it's those who have been breaking the law of God who are the cause of this. Don't you get it twisted. Come on, say amen. amen. Are you following me, brothers and sisters? Yeah. But if we we're reading, we would know that. Come on, say amen. amen. All right, let me, let me hustle. Look at this. They understood not that saying, verse 32. They were afraid to ask him. When he came to Capernaum, he said, to his, uh, he said, being in the house, he asked his disciples, he said, what is it that you disputed among yourselves, by the way, but they held their peace? Or by the way, they had disputed among themselves who should be the greatest. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, what the problem is. The debt, the the disciples were just one notch. Listen to me. They were one notch away from the rank and file of Israel. What they were saying, Israel on a whole believed. But the difference between the rank and file of Israel and the disciples is the disciples believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Are you listening to me? But what it tells me is that even with that belief, you, are, you can swing one way or the other. Do, 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 are you getting me? So in other words, you can, you can believe, and that's Jesus, but you, you believe in Jesus, but not listen to what Jesus says. <laughs> Come on, brothers, are you hearing this? So here comes the fourth time, and this is the final time. This is the fourth and final time. The Bible says in verse 32 of Mark chapter 10, excuse me, Mark 10. It was one chapter over. Mark 10, now verse 32. 
one chapter over. Here it is, verse 32, Mark 10, 32. Here it goes. Look at this. And they were in the way going up to Jerusalem. And Jesus went, what does it say, everyone? Lord, have mercy. It's, listen, that's why I praise God for the spirit of prophecy. Let me explain to you what, what's significant about that. When the Bible says Jesus went before him, before them, and you see the next part, they were amazed, and as they followed, they were afraid. You know why the servant Lord says? Because she says, they, they, they figured that if the things that he said is going to happen, it's going to happen in Jerusalem. So they were amazed that when they started getting on the road to Jerusalem, Jesus was in the front. <laughs> Y'all heard me? In other words, they said, why don't we just go around Jerusalem? Hmm? But Jesus is in a, is a rendezvous with destiny. Are you listening to me? Jesus has an appointment. Lost humanity needs Jesus to fulfill his mission. Those who have sinned, starting with Adam and Eve, coming down through the ages, including me and you, need him to do what he said he's going to do. So Jesus went ahead of the pack, meeting his fate and his destiny. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, this is the kind of resolve that you and I must have towards the end of time. I always ask myself this question, you know, I always ask myself this question, what made these reformers so strong? Martin Luther, Jerome and Husk, Wycliffe, what made them so resolved in the face of pain, resolved in the face of danger? And I believe it's because they loved the Lord as they understood him with all their heart, with all their mind, and with all their soul. I read about one man, and his name is escaping me. <laughs> he was so resolved that they, a punishment was awaiting him. He was to go, I believe, I believe to Rome. I believe it was. And punishment was awaiting him there. And he sent a telegram ahead and said, when I meet my fate, do not mix it with anything. I want it just as it comes. I don't want to tell you. I don't want to tell you what happened to that man, but it was gruesome. And I ask myself this question in these days. Listen to me. This is why I'm talking to you like this. In these days where we're, you know, we live in America, you know, prosperity and so on and so forth, and we start to complain if the temperature is a little bit, little bit too chilly. Hmm? You have individuals, brothers and sisters, who were tortured and punished and imprisoned. All right. Y'all listen to this message? Here it is. I got to close. Here it is. They were in the way, verse 32, going up to Jerusalem. Jesus went before them, and they were amazed as he went forward. You see, they were amazed, and as they followed, they were afraid. But praise the Lord, he took again the twelve and began to tell them what things should happen unto him, saying, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man shall be delivered unto the chief priests and unto the scribes. And they shall condemn him to death and shall deliver him to the Gentiles and they shall mock him and shall scourge him and shall spit upon him and shall kill him and after the third day rise again. What you will notice now is that this is the most detailed that Jesus has been. As I, what, what lesson can we get from it? As you get closer to the event, more details come. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, even though the word of God has been as it's been, it is not going to change. The spirit of prophecy has been as it has been. It's not going to change. Also, as you do more reading, as we get further into, into the, into the times, all of a sudden the details start popping out. Are you listening to me? Stuff that you read and I've read that didn't make a whole lot of sense, now it starts to make more and more sense. Is that right? The Lord is more detailed as we get closer to the event. Look at this. Look at this. And James and John, the sons of Devity, 
come unto him, saying, Master, we would that thou shouldest do for us whatsoever we shall desire. And he said unto them, What would ye that I should do for you? And they said this, look at this, everyone. <laughs> they said unto him, Grant unto us that we may sit one on thy right hand and the other on thy left hand in thy glory. Lord, have mercy. They're not talking about his glory on high in heaven. They're talking about in a kingdom that they think he's going to establish here on earth. Grant unto us that we may sit one on the right hand and the left hand. Let me tell you, watch the ever. I told you there's a price to pay. When you don't improve upon what the Lord says, you don't stay in limbo in one place. As if you move, if you listen to what the Lord says, you move in his direction. If you don't, you start moving in an opposite direction. What was literally happening was the disciples were moving physiologically with Jesus, but spiritually they're moving in the opposite direction. Now, brothers and sisters, where they said nothing, well, Peter rebuked Jesus in the first instance, where they said nothing when he came down off the Mount of Transfiguration and kept that saying to themselves, where they said nothing but held their peace when he asked them, what was it you disputed among yourselves? By the way, now they start, they start to speak up, but they speak in delirium. Lord, when you establish your kingdom, grant that one will sit on the right hand and the other on the left hand in thy glory. Can you imagine the way the Lord felt? When he's talking about one thing and they're talking about something else. Well, brothers and sisters, if you can imagine that, you can imagine how he feels right now. Are you listening to me? When our energy is in one thing and the Lord is trying to pull us in another direction. And let me just say this, brothers and sisters, there's only one way for us today to be talking about what he's talking about, and that is if we read the information about today. If you're not doing that, you're not talking about what he's talking about. Come on, say amen. Am I telling the truth? If you're reading about the times you live in. See, let, let me tell you. I do my reading. We got this phenomenon going on in America, and I do my reading, and I... And, and, and lots of us don't want to talk about it. We don't want to say anything. But I do my reading. Try to match all things considered. First coming of Christ. The second coming of Christ. Ecclesiastes chapter 1. The thing that hath been is the thing that shall be. There's no new thing. Is there anything that may be said? See, it has been new. It hath been already of old time. There's nothing new under the sun. Are you listening to me? And I look at what's going on here in America. And I say, what, Lord, what is, what is going on here? Are you listening to me? And then I begin to look and I see what well, it is not a surprise. I'm going to challenge you to look at Barabbas and Christ. Barabbas was supposed to be a Messiah. Are y'all listening to me? Barabbas led an insurrection in the capital city. <laughs> so we don't want to talk about this stuff. We don't want to talk about it. No, we don't want to talk about it. We got prophecy staring us in the face, and we don't want to talk about it. You have the servant of the Lord saying, the scenes that happened during his trial will be repeated on an immense, more immense scale in the future. That's what Ellen White says. And those who give their affections to any leader other than Christ will be under a delusion. Did you hear me? We are in the process of watching wrong become right and right become wrong. And I don't care about politics. Are you listening to me? Right and listen, listen to me. Listen to this. I thought you need to hear this. Because how many of us are looking at what's going on? 2015, Dort College. Look it up. Christian College. Candidate Trump says, I can go to Fifth Avenue. Come on, you all. See, if I, if I say that somewhere else, it's well, Fifth Avenue, and, and they hear about it, but you know Fifth Avenue. 
I ain't go to Fifth Avenue and shoot somebody and still not lose any support. That I had nothing to do with politics. You didn't say I can pass this measure or go there. That's different. We wouldn't talk about it in the pulpit. But when you talk about bad behavior, I can do anything and won't lose any support. That ain't politics. Now, I'm sorry if we have a hard time overcoming that. But let me tell you, brothers and sisters, we better pay attention. We got too many of God's people. On Sabbath, we're espousing all these principles, and we know about the law of God, and it's the character. It's this transcript of his character, and all these things. And then when Sunday comes, and Monday, we turn on our favorite news, and we, we throw that all out the window. And that can happen with either side. Come on, say amen. amen. I was telling New Jerusalem when they passed the the uh, when they the Supreme Court's made homosexual homosexual marriages uh, uh, legal in all fifty states. I was telling the church that the current president at that time has something to do with us coming to Sodom and Gomorrah 2.0. Well, I told the church that because I'm a Seventh-day Adventist. Trying to get ready for the Lord's coming. I'm not trying to juggle between parties and my faith. My faith is first. Come on, say amen. Are you listening to me? Here it is. James and John. I told you, listen, I told them last week, Usually you start off slow when you come to pastor a church, but I don't have time to start off slow. Come on, say amen. We just got to start. <laughs> amen. You got to hear it. Come on, say amen. All right, here it is. Look at this. So, 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 so they asked a grant unto us that we may sit. I got to finish. One on thy right hand, the other on thy left hand, in thy glory. Jesus said unto them, verse 38, Jesus said unto them, ye know not what ye ask. Can you drink? of the cup that I drink of or be baptized with the baptism that I'm baptized with and they answered yes we can we can see that sounds just like Peter doesn't it I'm ready hmm but the answer is actually no they can't Peter would that, he'd be able to drink later on. Drink of the cup he drinks of. Come on, say amen. amen. When he says, happy are ye when you suffer persecution for righteousness. That's Peter, same Peter, amen. When he finally got it together. Let me be clear, brothers and sisters. When the hour of trial came, I'm only going to refer to it because of time. When the hour of trial came, you're going to look at it in Matthew chapter 26. I'm not going to take the time. I'm not going to take the time. But I just want you to know about it. Matthew chapter 26. You take the time. And you're going to take time to read the whole thing. It, 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 well, you look at verse 31. Look at verse 31. Matthew chapter 24. Let's make sure you see it. Matthew 24 verse 31. Jesus said to his disciples, look at this. Look at this. 26, 31. He said, all ye shall be offended because of me tonight. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered. Everybody's going to be offended. Everybody's going to leave. Did you know, brothers and sisters, that there's a similar prophecy in Matthew chapter 24. Let's make sure you see it in Matthew chapter 24 about many of God's people in these last days. Matthew chapter 24. I want you to look, uh, look at verse, uh, let's see, verse, uh, verse 20, 10. No, 11, 9. Look at 9. 9 and 10. Look at this. This is a prophecy similar to what the Lord said. This is about us, though. And I pray it is not you who are listening to this message. Look at this. Then shall. No, I want to make sure. Let, uh, no, 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 no. We want, we want verse. 
Oh, yes. Yeah, we want, that's it. That verse 9. Then shall they, read it everyone, deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name. Now listen to me. That's what you want. I mean, you don't want to be hated, but that's what you want. That means you're on the right side of truth. But this is the a spotlight in the last days being upon the people of God. So dual prophecy, but it, 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 it pertains to the disciples then, but it also de- pertains to the disciples of Christ in the last days. God's followers. Look at this. The next verse tells you what's going to happen. It's going to be a hemorrhage in the church. Look at verse 10. Verse 10. Look at this. Then shall many be, shall be what? How many? Does it say a few? Just a handful? What does it say, everyone? Many, many shall be offended and shall do what, everyone? Betray one another and what, everyone? You know what all that means is when the spotlight, the spotlight comes on God's people. See, right now we walked in here and nobody kept us from worshiping. Come on, say amen. Amen. It's all free, isn't that right? Things good. But you know, there's coming a day where it's not going to be so easy. Come on, say amen. Amen. Are you listening to me? So so in good times, everybody can praise the Lord. Isn't that right? But the question is, when the spotlight is turned upon the people of God, what's going to happen then? Amen. Amen. Next thing you know, brothers and sisters, just what Jesus said. I don't have time to do this whole message. I'll just tell you, I'll just tell you what I was going to tell you if I had time to tell you. (laughs) Here it goes. This is what you got to get. They go into the Garden of Gethsemane. And there's a profile of two very different approaches to the crisis. Jesus asked them, now he asked the other disciples other than Peter, James, and John to stay and pray towards the front of the garden. I've been there, so I kind of understand a little bit. But then he went further into the garden and took the closest disciples that he had, and he also asked them to pray. He asked them to do what? Watch and what? Pray. Listen to this. Now, Jesus goes a little ways from them, and he begins to pray. He prays now with the most intense prayer recorded in history. Isn't that right? It's a, he begins to ooze, as it were, drops of blood. It's a condition known as diabetesis. Blood oozing from his vein. Intense prayer. In sharp contrast, the disciples are sitting there, laying down there asleep. Now, did they all go to sleep at the same time? I doubt that. I'm sure one, look, one disciple looked at the other and said, yeah, what you going to do? Yeah. I don't know. I got to feel kind of sleepy. And they go to sleep. One taking the cue from the other. Instead of them taking the cue from Jesus, they take the cue from each other. Why is that? Listen to me. You can find it in Jesus' words. Watch and pray. But if the prophecies that he has given us are not known and understood and read and and, and believed and become a part of our conscience, When he told them what's going to happen, they didn't listen. Therefore, they weren't watching for anything. Why would you watch for something you don't believe in? Nothing to watch. Here Jesus is watching because he knows it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Let me get ready. Jesus is praying. Listen to folks. Listen. Listen. Jesus is praying and he hasn't sinned. If anybody should rest on his laurels, it should be Jesus. But Jesus wants extra power. How much more you and I, sinful mortal, sinful human beings, should be watching and praying, reading and praying, studying and praying, coming 
to prayer meeting. I want to make it personal. Come on, say amen. amen. Man, if, if we understand the time that, elder, let's understand the time that we're living in, the Bible class would be packed. Come on, say amen. amen. You see, what the devil wants us to do is get into this holding pattern. Nothing to see here. No big deal. Downplay the signs of the time. No, that, you know, oh, I would get to prep. No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm, I'll get there next week. And just get the holding, holding, holding pattern until preparation time is done. That's the plan of the devil. Don't help him. Come on, say amen. Don't help him. Watch and pray. This is the word to the Lord. Jesus, when the mob comes, is prepared. And that is for the crisis. And the disciples are not prepared. That's why Jesus goes on to deny himself. Oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass for me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. But Peter denies Jesus in favor of himself. I don't know this man. Oh, brothers and sisters, let's get ready for the Lord's coming. Amen? And let's do it. This is the only time we have to do it. Preparing now.